Hi, it's Gwen from Hummingbird Tarot, and this is a video response to Anthony's 31 Days of, of Tarot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified each week when I upload a video. So today's prompt was about showing us your favorite High Priestess card. This one was fun for me. I don't know anybody in my everyday life that reads tarot. I've found people through connecting uh, at meetups, but I pretty much have to drive over an hour to get to those groups. So I don't get to talk about this stuff. They just don't get it. People in my life, I have a few friends that are starting to look at tarot, but I can't have a conversation with them about it and let them know how excited I am about these types of things. So it's fun to be able to share this and also to see what everybody else has to, to share. Uh, I'm really grateful to be a part of this community. I can hear in my voice, I'm actually uh, catching a cold. So you'll hear that a little bit here and there. It's that time of year. Okay. Uh, I kind of went a little nuts on this one. So let me just apologize in advance and bear with me because I found a lot of really, really, really cool High Priestess cards. Where should I start? I'm just gonna, in, in no particular order, I do have a few that are favorites that are just really cool. My main qualification for, for a card being able to participate today is that it really made me feel something. I look at this card and it makes me feel something. So let me share. So the first card is the High Priestess out of the Sacred Circle deck. It's written by Anna Franklin and illustrated by Paul Mason. This just feels magical to me. And I can just feel myself a, a little chill in the air and you can feel the cool breeze going through your hair, maybe lifting your your cloak because you're wearing a cloak, you know, it's just that kind of weather for it. Walking on, on the moors there. And then I love the uh, circle of standing stones. If you look really carefully in the background, there's a circle of stones back there. So it's just, it's just magical. The next one, it makes sense why this card is on the front of the deck. It's from the Tarot Illuminati and it's that card right there. But I mean, look at her. She just looks like she's ready to come in, take over, set everybody straight and tell them what's for. And she's got it together and she's beautiful. Oh, stunning, stunning. The next one, and there aren't a ton of decks out here, and I'm not usually a huge fan of dragons, but there aren't a ton of decks out there that have them, but this particular one, I think it's the whole Celtic connection. I, I have some Irish and Scottish in my heritage, and I definitely feel a connection to that part of the world. And so that just really makes this one even more cool. This is the Celtic Dragon Tarot by DJ Conway and Lisa Hunt. And the High Priestess in this one, this to me, it looks like the white dragon is her dragon and it's fighting off the darkness that's coming after her. Stunning. I love it. I love it. So the next one is from the Anna Kay Tarot. And I'm sure we'll probably see that one, this one as well. And she's just taking a moment to chill. She still looks confident and powerful, even though she's in a relaxed state. And that really calls to me. Like, it's okay to let your guard down. You're not gonna lose any of your power. And I love that. This is an older deck. It also makes sense that this is the one that's on the cover. But this is the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. And that particular card right there is the priestess. And these cards are just interesting because they're round. But she, I mean, I love the Egyptian feel to this one. And this one just feels very powerful and magical to me too. 
The next one is from the Chrysalis Tarot, and this is written by Tony Brooks, and the paintings are by Holly Sierra. <laughs> is the sorceress. And I'm a little partial to redheads. Oh, stunning. Again, that one just, I really enjoy it. And when I look at it, I just, I can feel her confidence and her power. And this one's from an older deck. Whoops, I forgot I had the little white book out. This is from the Witch's Tarot. And this is Ellen Cannon Reed and Martin Cannon. And I, this one, I just love, it seems like she's conjuring something and you can just feel the wind whipping through. And I can imagine myself standing there with her, feeling the power in the air. You can see why I had such a hard time cutting down the numbers. We're maybe halfway. I don't have the box for this one, but this is, I believe, the Green Witch. This one too, the High Priestess. Ugh. This is, I just, I'm really drawn to Standing Stones. And I'm a huge Outlander fan. More the books than the series, but this kind of makes me feel... I think of that show and, and that those books and the magic around there and how powerful they are. And being out there in, in the moonlight really calls to me. The next one is the Vision Quest Tarot. And I've talked about this deck a little bit in some of my other videos. This is by Guy and Sylvie Winter and Joe Doze. This one is the Medicine Woman card. And this one too, I just, this one you can see by looking at this card and the cycles of the moon and the rivers and the water on, on all the earth's creatures are very much a part of her spirituality and this card very sp speaks very highly to that and I, I definitely feel a connection to that and the connection to nature and so this this card I also feel a connection with because of those things the next one is Tara Wonderland, and I, I'm a Barbara Moore fan. This is one of her decks. And this was the High Priestess card. And I love Alice's looking out the window. And if you, look, if you read the interpretations in the book of the card, she doesn't really know that the high priestess is there waiting for her, but she's just on the other side of the glass. And that really, that gives me chills thinking about that and just how close all of that is. Okay, so another favorite of mine is the steampunk tarot. And this is the high priestess card from this deck. And I love her attitude. She's beautiful and confident, but her body language lets you know that she's tough and you don't want to mess with her. I love it. Oh, my favorite I saved for last. These are both the High Priestess cards from the Book of Shadows. It's, it's a two deck set, As Above and So Below. The As Above deck is the wisdom card. I mean, look at that. I, I, don't, I don't even need to say anything. Just stunning. And then this is the from the So Below deck. This is also very cool. And I love her connection. I, the only thing that, that I don't like so much about this deck is that I love to be able to read more about the cards and, and why the images were chosen and why they were drawn the way they were. The book that came with this, these two decks doesn't go into a whole lot of detail. So I guess it's good and bad because you can use your intuition a lot, but when you're really interested in something and you want to read up more on it, it'd be nice to be able to have that information available just so you can, you can spend some time diving into it. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. I had a blast looking through all these, these decks and 
uh, finding all the cards that really made me feel something. I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody else did. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it.